Won't somebody please think of the left wing's free speech? No. As, uh, the rallying cry of the leftists in response to some people being arrested whilst the uh, funeral was no. taking place for Her Majesty the Queen. I, I don't care either. I, I no longer respect the free speech of people actively trying to destroy me, my culture, and any uh, children I end up having. It's it's not very useful, that's that's for sure. However, I just find it hilarious how the left is completely abandoning the free speech principle and saying, this is a right-wing thing. Come on, right-wingers, why won't you protect it? It's like, <laughs> you are actually saying you cannot be trusted or capable of protecting it yourself. Are we already... Fantastic. We, I, I'm glad for the admission. We already knew this. I think um, in regards to the Sam Harris thing from the other week, I saw the distributist posted a video which had a perfect name, which was the loud part out quiet, because they've basically been screaming it in our faces that that's how they operate for years now, and it's only just now that they're saying it uh, that it's actually... No, it's not the quiet part out loud, it's the loud part out quiet. But anyway, just a reference first, so if you'd like to uh, support us, you can go over to lotusears.com and do check out this video of Carl Most Recent One, being the word in the Shire speech he gave at the Witten, which explains how the English community can defend its own continuation, which of course includes the free speech principle as the English-speaking tradition being the best one in regards to actual defense of free speech instead of the French definition of I will defend it until it is illegal. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Frenchie. Not even kidding. The rights of man. Like, you're checking out for the French Revolution. It's, it's hilarious how pathetic their defense of free speech is. Otherwise, we should get into the news. So we have uh, the news here, of course, that uh, His Majesty King Charles III has been proclaimed the new monarch in all of the British territories, including the British Antarctic Territory. I decided to pick as the image for this one, if you can get the image up, just because that's hilarious. <laughs> I, I love the British Antarctic Territory's flag as well. It has a penguin on it. People didn't know. Fantastic. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> no, wait, where's the penguin? I don't see the penguin. Oh, anymore. you've got to go to the Wikipedia entry for it. This is just the British flag. It's, oh, okay. There's, there's a little penguin on the... It's a white background as I well. I mean, that, if, if anything, does this not show the uh, beautiful unity of the English peoples that you can be halfway across the world in the, uh, in the Arctic and still be able to... Uh, have some nice little ceremony like this. Yeah. If you click off this actually and scroll up, because this is just in the long line of overseas territories who are all taking part in this proclamation, and you can just see some of the images. I mean, we have there, so you, what have we got? Just reading, uh, you've got Canada, Turks and Caicos, Falkland Islands, South Georgia as well. It's just beautiful imagery. Uh, the Bahamas, Montserrat, British Virgin Islands. I can't believe there's actually anything left on Montserrat after the volcano, but whatever. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's that's just wonderful because that lets me know, at least if I go to any of these places, whatever differences there are, there is something shared between us. Yeah, and I did see Jordan Peterson actually saying that, well, what would the response be to this? And he pondered, well, maybe everywhere in the Commonwealth will recognize we had a beautiful thing, and now that we've lost it, I mean, we need to rebuild it and maybe value it a lot more than we did because yes. we notice value in when it's gone. And uh, that does actually seem to be taking place, but this isn't about that. We'll move on further, though, to the next uh, in the link here, being that the, the palace has made a demand, please stop bringing Paddington bears and marmalade sandwiches to the to the <laughs> funeral, because we have too many, <laughs> which is just <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> we, are we are reaching a shortage of marmalade sandwiches across the country. Please keep them for yourselves. It's just it's so British. I, I didn't put this out. I wonder if we could play it, actually. Just, it is so hilarious, as the newsreader is like, please stop bringing them. And at 7.52 here on BBC Breakfast, I just want to bring you a little bit of, of advice that's come from the Royal Parks this morning. They are suggesting that there are enough Paddingtons and marmalade sandwiches in the parks at the moment. So please <laughs> feel free to bring, bring flowers, but maybe don't bring any more Paddingtons or marmalade sandwiches for now. So I'll pause like that. That's so sweet. I, I love it. They're suggesting it as well. <laughs> like, they're suggesting it, and only for now. We might need some more marmalade sandwiches later. Anyway, but there's the, the tone and the tenor of the British realms and how we are reacting. However, there is, of course, another aspect to all of this. Because if you go to the next one here, we can see there are, of course, Republicans doing Republican things, which is they'll turn up with their signs. Is Ash Sarker a Republican? Oh, 100%. Hides it. I, I, it definitely is. I, I just, I, yeah, I just see her as a commie. I see a Republican, a communist, uh, and communism as mm. slightly separate things. Well, commies are Republicans until they're in charge. But you can see the, she's uh, respond responding to a story in which a woman has been arrested after holding an abolish monarchy sign in Edinburgh. And she wasn't the only one. There are a fair few of the uh, uh, police acting, upholding the law as it is written, which is that being offensive is an offense in the UK. And with regards to the monarchy, they've been arresting people holding up signs, of course, as she's saying here. And her response is, I'm sure the free speech defenders at GB News will be all over this any second. 
as if this is any kind of dunk. As if this is any kind of criticism of GB News or the Free Speech Brigade. <laughs> what, what, what does Ash do when they do do a little segment on it and go, actually, that's really stupid, we shouldn't be arresting this woman? Oh, nothing, because it's the norm. It mm -hmm. is entirely the norm that the free speech defenders of this country do as they always do, which is, oh, I don't disagree with it, it's stupid, but they shouldn't be arrested for it. However, it is the law and I'm not an MP, I have no power. Because that is all you can do. And then her sitting there saying this, though, it is hilarious how she phrases herself out of the discussion. The left is not here to, to get over this any second now. They are incapable. Well, they, the, are, they are not even willing to do such a thing. The only reason that she's annoyed that this happened is because she agrees with the sentiment that this woman was putting forward. Sure. It's that, nothing to that, do with principles of speech. That hypocrisy is simple and, and Yeah, there. it's obvious. But it's, it's more the point that she is saying, like, the right wing, guys, the free speech principle is under attack. Go and defend it. Because I can't. It's like, no, you can't. You're utterly useless in this regard. You actively attack it on a daily basis. I, I think that's actually quite an interesting way of looking at it, because, yeah, some of these people do see the right as somewhat of a necessary evil so that they can defend principles when they need defending that these people don't actually believe in. No, they have no rock to stand on, and instead they desperately need the right to pull them out of the water and uh, turn up like this, as she does, and be like, come and defend this woman. I was like, well, yeah, that's the normal thing to do. You but then the at the same here. time, they do only ever bring it up when it's to defend the free speech of people they already of agree course. with. Otherwise, so. it, they wouldn't care. If you go to the next one here, you can see there are more instances of this. This is some guy who was shouting at Prince, um, I think it's Andrew, shouting that he's a nonce or something. And of course, uh, the, the uh, people there they did, were like, this is a funeral, bro, what the hell are you doing? And there's that discussion to be had, of I, course. Yeah, I don't think anybody in that crowd disagrees. <laughs> it's but, just a bit disrespectful. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's not convicted, so it's just they do what, the, what you woe. But he got uh, taken away. The, the police arrested him for that. And as you can see in the next one here, there is uh, he is one of few, to say the least. Of course, this being a funeral, and uh, even in Scotland, which is supposedly the most Republican area of the kingdom, we have uh, the Scots out in force to pay the respects. But if you go to the next link here, we have Leo Kursk, of course, responding. He's like, oh, well, you got me, Ash. I normally support free speech, but not when it's a woman holding up signs. Those are the really Based, unusual. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the exceptions that we all have to hold ourselves by. If I remember the U.S. Constitution correctly, the uh, First Amendment: Congress shall make no law excepting those of women held holding signs. Yeah. <laughs> Shall not in infringe free speech, except of women. <laughs> <laughs> Based. But there you have it. It's just like, of course, she's referencing the GB crew. So, of course, Leo Kirst being part of the GB crew turns up and is like, well, fair enough. I was, pff, I'm leaving. Don't know what I'm going to do. We have Nick Dixon as well, a good friend of the show, who's just responded with a strange and inaccurate caricature of GB. Highly doubt anyone there thinks this person should have been arrested. The channel is basically all libs. <laughs> Which <laughs> is true. It's a routine comment Nick has. In fact, I might have to start supporting treason laws just to provide some balance. So uh, Nick will presumably be on as we speak, demanding the hanging of anyone who's holding up their sights. <laughs> Nick's getting his royal gown ready. <laughs> yeah. And if you go to the next link, we can of course see that the Free Speech Union jumped in as, as is entirely the norm. Entirely expected and entirely not As is the only point of their existence. But is the but hang on, it's not that they are some rightist organization that is like, you know, they'll only defend the right and Ash has some kind of point of like they sometimes don't. This is so normal, it's not a story that their right well, turns yeah. up and does their job. I mean, the, the funny thing is the left is always quite bad for the most part at pointing out uh, right-wing hypocrisy. The right's amazing at pointing out left-wing hypocrisy. hypocrisy. They just don't care. It's not about hypocrisy in the slightest. That, that's all water under the bridge. Like This is the norm for them, right? The point is that she's like, look, the right-wingers have to come in and defend us. It's the fact that she cannot. She knows the left cannot. She knows that she herself cannot. There is no principle in which they can stand. Of course, the Free Speech Union writing that whatever your views are monarchy, the protester also has the rights to hers. This is the norm. And if we go to the next link, however, Count Dankula is someone who is just enjoying himself immensely in regards <laughs> to all of this. Uh, of course, you have his new name as Dan McCulloch. Uh, McCulloch? Duke, Duke of Cumberwold. Cumbernold. Yeah, whatever. Perhaps, <laughs> perhaps being, having lived closer to Scotland for you, I'm able to translate this. It's all fake anyway, Dan McCulloch, Duke of Cumbernauld. <laughs> so here's fake. You account. don't know about the 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 uh, fantastic region of Cumbernauld? No, funnily enough. You've never uh, had a Cumbernauld sausage? No. <laughs> <laughs> this is him, of course, in his persona as a member of the royal family, 35th in line now, I believe. And he says, uh, in response to some woman being arrested, excellent news. Speech has consequences, as the rabble like to say. 
which is just perfectly reasonable from him, frankly. Someone who has gone to uh, the court system and been stolen of his money by, by Her Majesty's justice system. So can't blame him for basically just being like, eh, told you, don't care. Sink. It's literally just drown. Like, you asked for this. Enjoy it. If you go to the next one here, we can see uh, the real lesson, of course, from him being that it appears very many leftists are getting sacked or arrested under offence laws for things they are protesting slash saying about the royal family. Such a shame. No one was warning them about that for years. Silly peasants. <laughs> and that's the point. Just like this all relied on rightist principles. You are now saying that out loud, as you say, the quiet part. <laughs> Which is just like, oh, please protect us, because you don't have them. And without the rightists, you wouldn't have any rights. You know you wouldn't. You don't believe in them. So, there you have that. If you go to the next one, of course, the, the leftists are still out there censoring everything they can in regards to criticism of their own speech. They don't value free speech in the slightest. This is just on a minute level, of course, but we'll take Dr. Schola, who is a, a leftist and, uh, of course, started just deleting responses to her own posts because she couldn't take the criticism. Her saying that, of course, the royal family is slavery and racism, blah, 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 blah. So someone responded, you're a member of the Nigerian royal family, a family directly involved in the sale of black slaves. Oof. I mean, the family involved <laughs> in the sale of black slaves. You and the Beninians, so <laughs> you too. Of course, she uh, hid everything, mentioning that she's a member of the royal family and also the only one making money off black slaves because they were the ones selling their own daughters. The uh, whites, so the Portuguese and the British, just human traffickers. Not actually capturing people and selling them. But again, half the sense of that. If we go to Owen Jones, though, blew it out of the park with this point. Which is the, as you can see, Owen Jones. Actually, no, I am going to post this. The Daily Mail et al. are going to scour the timelines of everyone and anyone they can construe as left wing, as it is defined by themselves, for content they can outrage their readers with. Which I love. Again, another quiet bit. I mean, what did you say earlier? How did you phrase it? Because it is just perfect. The loud part out quiet? Yeah. Once again, credit to the dist uh, distributist for that one. But it's just like, yes, the left-wing movement in every Anglo country at this point is a content creator. I mean, literally, like, you just have to show people what the left are believing, unironically, and that is content. Because it is true. You can't do that with right-wing people. You can't show them, like, oh, look, the right believes in, like, civil liberties and stuff. How crazy is that? Wait, no, pay attention. Because <laughs> people just won't care. Why would they? But whatever the left unironically believe today is always going to be mad. The next statement being, if you are on the receiving end of this, you cannot imagine what will hit you. Yeah. If you write out, I, uh, I hope that Her Majesty's death is brutal and, and blah, blah, blah. So, funnily enough, the kingdom doesn't take too kindly to that. You will be crucified. You could lose your job, be plastered across the internet forever and you could be subjected to very extreme threats of violence and death. <laughs> and there might be people in the country who try to act on that. Don't make yourself... Don't. So he's... he In so many words, he's saying, stop being mental on Twitter, guys. Just give it a week. No, he's, he's saying that, oh, no, we're being treated as we've always treated right-wingers. We denounce them as racist. Remember, the left-wing definition of racist is you don't believe that everyone is the same. And people like Romy Tomlinson and everyone else, uh, they, they might end up losing their jobs, plastered across the internet and all the media forever, subjected to very extreme threats of violence and death. And there's a lot of people in this country who might carry those out. And that's why you're promoting it, endlessly. Anyone who decide has to be cancelled and destroyed, you endlessly hope that they are killed by those in this country who will do it. Oh, the cry bullying is so blatant. Yeah, I love it. It's just like, racists don't have rights, but Republicans do. Don't they, guys? Says Owen. I was like, hmm... Yeah, no, no one has any rights. This is the United Kingdom. No any rights for years. If we go to the next link here, we can see the point that he's whining again is like the lady who was arrested in Scotland. Oh my God, the Tories did this. Uh, no, they didn't. As you can see, Samantha posting here, the Scottish protester that Owen Jones is referencing was arrested under Section 38 of the Criminal Justice and Licensing Scotland Act 2010, which was introduced by the SNP. There you have it. I mean, the most leftist party in this country. Am I supposed to be surprised? No. Should I put on my surprise face anyway? No. Oh, well, that's all right then. <laughs> I don't think there's a need. I just, I love it. I love how they're like, oh my God, all those laws we passed criminalizing offense <laughs> applies to us? Yeah. Yes. No, this sword has two edges. No. <laughs> if only there was some kind of count, you know, some kind of royalty like Count Dankula, who might have been warning about exactly this. It's ridiculous. No, he went to the European court and they said rights don't exist. Yeah, well, we just had to believe it because the left agreed with the European court. Mm. The next link here, of course, being uh, regards to the individual who decided to 
cry out about the fact they wanted a violent death, Her Majesty. Uh, so the professor here slams the queen again by saying she is part of the cult of white womanhood and her woke students are backing her. Now, I know Owen will see this. Let's look at the Daily Mail. They went looking for outrage bait and they produced it. Like, no, they didn't. They went looking at the left and went, yeah, here's the left. And everyone went, hey, oh. don't touch me. <laughs> like, don't want to be anywhere near that. But again, just the statement there. I mean, the statement that Her Majesty is the cult of white womanhood. The thing you could ask is, does that affect her qualifications as a professor of applied linguistics? I mean, yes. I mean, she's clearly insane. And also, why are her students backing her? Well, yeah, that's. I wouldn't want her teaching my kids. No. And because reason... I feel like she's not just going on about linguistics. No, she's clearly indoctrinating these kids. As the why else would they back statements like this? Because they have been taught this crap. There's no criminal element needed, of course. Except uh, there is. Because if you were actually upholding the law, as written, 100%. This, this is grossly offensive according to Section 127 of the Communication Act. However, meanwhile, in actual rightist land, I, I love how the left are interacting with the law ever so slightly. Like... <sighs> It's actually illegal to make things that are offensive. Wait, they, they, they're, just, they're just reading through the laws going, bloody hell, have you seen all this? Yeah. Yes. Like it's, it's only started to be applied to them thanks to this circumstance. They're suddenly like, oh my God, the law's actually against us in some cases. That's against everyone. We're all getting screwed. And whereas the right, it's just another day in fairyland. We have Voice of Wales here with a video. This is a, a member of Voice of Wales getting a cold call by the police telling him that he is uh, going to be jailed if he keeps up a post because he uh, decided to call some illegal aliens undocumented aliens because he used the phrase undocumented aliens that is grossly offensive and therefore is an offense and if someone complains then he'd be in trouble no one had complained i would imagine not the, the police just did this they yeah the, the, the police is just preemptively going full minority report and yeah. uh, when the crime is eventually logged you might want to know when, when my colleague hits the complaint button we're going to come and arrest you just let you know Turn it off. Let's uh, play this. Concern was that somebody will take offence to it. So the reason we're pleased to contacting you, or to give you the to speak to, was to basically say, look, end up, take that video down. If someone sees it, that is of ethnic minority, or someone takes offence to it, there is going to be offences there against you for making that video. Because obviously hate crime is, if someone perceives that to be something, and if someone takes offence to it, you could be liable for offence. People are going to take offence to whatever, but the, at the end of the day, offence is subjective. Um, so, you know, I get offended, you know, people get offended over everything. So it's, it's not down to me. I'm not going to remove the video because I'm a journalist. That's my job. It's a very good answer. Yep. Which is, it's actually my job, bro. Also, I love how he says in there that you need to take down the video in case an ethnic minority sees it. Or anyone. Like, right, so you singled out ethnic minorities as the ones who are going to be offended by him saying undocumented alien. It's actually not even the right term. It's actually a quite PC term, hmm. saying undocumented. It doesn't matter if they got documents or not. They're still an illegal alien entering this country. And the voice Watch of Wales... Watch out, Calum, you're going to get a call for that one. Go for it. <laughs> I'm up for the fight. <laughs> you go to the next one here, we have Voice of Wales, who have the full story, of course, as being there, guys. And uh, they write in here, last night, South Wales police visited James's parents' house looking for him. Why? the hell's wrong with you? That's quite distressing. James, who doesn't live at this address, then rang 101, and he was told that one of his videos covering secret migrant hotels in Cardiff, he referred to the illegal immigrants as undocumented aliens. In fact, they were so concerned by the use of those words, undocumented aliens, they chose to prioritise this online incident and diverted uniformed officers from their other duties on a busy Saturday night to take action, to visit the house, to scare him in person. Just luckily he wasn't there. Instead, he was out and about. And uh, they sent two officers to the house flat. No one had complained. Zero people were offended. No one could be offended. It's a retarded thing to be offended so at. E even the incredibly low minimum threshold of an offence being committed is not passed here. One complaint hadn't even been met. 
Zero complaints have been met. So the police are, like, unironically going minority report here. Very yeah. interesting. And this is yet another day for the right. I mean, the even right here just <coughs> another day of, like, you know, police harassment, because Voice of Wales are just used to this. In fact, we can see the video in question, in case you're wondering if he was actually outside screaming the N-word or something. Uh, no, funnily enough, it, nothing. It is literally just him talking to the hotel manager. Uh, I suppose we'll play this. Yeah, anything else? Uh, yeah, one more thing. So you said they're refugees. What country are they from? They're yes, from different countries. This from different countries. Different countries. Different countries. So it's like France, it's Italy's. Italy. 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 Refugees from Italy. That's Could mad. What, what language staff do you have? What language do they speak? So, Italy, Ukraine, South Africa, Albania, which isn't even at war like Italy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's good bands. Mm. So it's very sad what's happening in Italy and the war over there. But there you have it, just police harassment, endlessly. And in this case, because he exposed immigration failures. It's yet another day for the right, whereas the left are like, oh my God, it turns out we're actually on the wrong side of the law. Yeah, get used to it. Although there is the funniest question of free speech in regards to uh, Her Majesty the Queen's death, uh, happening in Saudi Arabia, <laughs> of all places. I don't know if you've read this story. No, I haven't, actually. Really funny. Saudi Arabia, man arrested after Mecca pilgrimage for the Queen. <laughs> the man, a Yemeni national, published a video clip of himself on social media on Monday at the Grand Mosque in Mecca, Islam's holiest site, where non-Muslims are forbidden, because Saudi Arabia is a very tolerant and diverse country. In the clip, he held up a banner saying, Umrah for the soul of Queen Elizabeth II, we ask God to accept her in heaven and amongst the righteous. He was arrested... Legal measures were taken against him, and he was referred to the public prosecution for this. Oh, what? Because that was quite a sweet sentiment. You're allowed to do uh, this sort of thing for another Muslim, even a dead Muslim, of course. But obviously not to anyone outside of that. For a non-Muslim, that's uh, obviously a no-no. Not, <laughs> so, not only a non-Muslim, the head of the English church. Yeah, so uh, he got in big trouble for that. Of course, no one's ever going to care, because uh, Saudi Arabia, do what they like, which uh, is their problem. I suppose we'll end this off just with something that's not leftist, because I uh, hate leftists. Just an lighter note. Just the news has come. If you'd like to go and visit the Queen when she's lying in state before her funeral, uh, the issue guidance has been published. The Palace of Westminster opens for the public at 5 p.m. on Wednesday, 14th of September, and will be open 24 hours a day until it closes at 6.30 a.m. on Monday, at which point the funeral will be taking place. So expect incredibly long queues, and also there's a big list of prohibited items, etc. Of course. You want to go. But the last thing, just so we can end on some uh, imperial glory, is uh, let's check out the people who uh, miss us the most, Hong Kong. And this is just a video of someone walking along the queue to the, I think I believe it's the uh, British consulate, showing off how many people have come to lay flowers for Queen Elizabeth II. Oh. And it goes on and on and on. Uh, eventually, she does actually post that there was some official who had to stand at the end of the queue, poor bugger, with a sign just saying queue is closed. <laughs> oh my god, that's your day. Yeah, and he had to stand there just so no one joined the queue so it, till, it, till it disappeared. Uh, that is uh, quite hopeful and uh, quite um, fulfilling to see that. Yeah, uh, this is the appreciation for people who have to deal with uh, not only without Her Majesty, but without any of the British world being able to save them from what's coming. If you appreciated that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content we have on the site, such as this premium article from John Tangney on being a conservative on campus, with an audio track for silver and gold tier members, of course. If you want to follow what else we're putting out, you can follow us on Getter at lotuseaters underscore com on Getter. Thank you and goodbye.